What's up everyone and welcome to Sunday with Ola 122. It's finally here baby. This is the Solar Type X. Holy sh What up, people of YouTube? Welcome. This is a very, very special Sunday with Ola because I have this finally the Solar Type X. It's been a long time coming, man. We've been designing this guitar for a lot of years. And then what happened? A pandemic happened. <laughs> and shit just took longer. So you guys have had to wait a little bit extra for the Type X, but it's finally here, man. This is our first one right there. Did you watch the video of this past Friday where I announced the Solar Guitars Europe Master Built Series guitars? No, you missed out. Go watch that video. We just launched a series of guitars built in Europe and this XF6 FRFSB is the first guitar from that shop right there. Holy I'm just really happy that we can finally unveil the news of this guitar. I've been having it here for a while. You probably saw it. It's been hanging here this whole time over there. You know how I work with uh, guitars and that. I just keep them on the walls until it's time. And then some guy is like, what is that? And they see something and it's like, I don't know what that is. And then you're like, but it's an X. No, it's not. And then there it is right there. <laughs> So obviously very exciting news for uh, me and Solar Guitars right there. Also something else that is completely new is that. What is that? That's a TV. That right there. I'm not sure what to have on that TV, but as of right now, I'm keeping the live sub count on there. I figured because I want to reach 1 million subscribers this year. Is that even possible? I don't think it is possible, but I want to. So could you guys help me out and subscribe right now? So I can watch the TV live and see when it updates the subscribe count. Technology, man, it... I'm ready to head straight into the news, guys. Did you see these? We have a Miami Chug Life cup and a t-shirt. You can get a bundle from oldenglandshop.com <laughs> or if you don't want a bundle, you can just get them separate, I guess. Ozzy Osbourne has retired from touring. Never would I have imagined that my touring days would have ended this way. After years of injury, illness and postponements, the belaggered Prince of Darkness has perhaps bowed to the inevitable and called a halt. Ozzy made an announcement in the post on social media. This is probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to share with my loyal fans, wrote Ozzy. As you may all know, four years ago this month I had a major accident where I damaged my spine. I have now come to the realization that I'm not physically capable of doing my upcoming European UK tour dates, as I know I couldn't deal with the travel required. Believe me when I say that the thought of disappointing my fans really me up more than you will ever know. So incredibly sad news from the Aussie camp. And that means that I'm not going to go and watch Aussie this spring. <laughs> I had tickets for an Aussie show, man. Here in Stockholm. It's not going to happen. I mean, he's not going to be there. It wouldn't make any sense for me to go there and try and watch it. He's not going to be on stage. You know? He's also saying, my team is currently coming up with ideas for where I will be able to perform without having to travel from city to city and country to country. So are they looking at doing like online live streaming events now? If he can't physically tour, what is the other option, I guess? So it's incredibly sad. It's the Prince of Darkness. But you know what? Never say never. Never say never. Maybe Ozzy will come back and do a tour when he's healthy again. You know, just like Kiss. They've had like several farewell tours and they just keep on going again and again. But the Kiss manager now confirms the band will play their final touring show in 2023. Future is still wide open. Whatever comes our way with technology and everything else, we'll look at it. There are plenty of other opportunities for the band. So much like with the Ozzy news, uh, where they're looking into other options, are we gonna see something happening soon? The way that they made these press releases, it seems like something is happening and uh, something is coming. Uh, new technology, I have no idea. Will it be holograms? Uh, 
whatever, or screens, or I don't know. Will it be live streams? I have no idea. But it seems like all these old bands, they have to figure out a way to keep on earning money by not touring, and they're looking for options, basically. What will it be? I have no idea. Let's all speculate. And then, yeah, not. <laughs> a guy that's incredibly angry about farewell tours is Dee Snyder of Twisted Sister. Dee Snyder says what we're all thinking. Bullshit reunion tours are lame as hell. <laughs> I've said when people retire, they should leave the stage. I'm tired of buying no more tour shirts and seeing people signing contracts in blood and then they show up three years later. I don't believe in that bullshit. Okay, Motley Crue did the same thing, I think. And they came back and they were not very good, but they did another tour. Obviously, I agree with D because if you sell a tour as being the last tour, people are gonna go apeshit about going to watch these tours. And then if they go and announce another last tour, I mean, it's kind of fooling the audience a little bit, no? It's playing tricks a little bit. But at the end of the day, if you're a fan of the band and you want to see them live, it's great. And you know, people surrounding this that don't really necessarily care about the bands, they're gonna speculate. And they're gonna be like, no, that's not okay. At the end, who cares? <laughs> Megadeth announces summer 2023 European tour dates. This is great news. And they're going through Stockholm, Sweden. Thank you so much. It might be too much to ask, but I would love to have a coffee with Dave Mustaine. How will I go about this? Can somebody help me out? Who do I get in contact with? Otherwise, I'll, I'll gladly have a coffee with Kiko again, because he's a nice guy. I love Kiko. Anyways, I'm really excited to go watch a headline tour with Megadeth now. Uh, last time they were uh, playing, they were supporting uh, Five Finger Death Munch. That was just after Dave's uh, surgery for his throat. So I understand maybe he, they couldn't pull off a headline show back then, you know, with his throat kind of rehabilitating. But now he has rehabilitated enough so they can do a headline tour. I'm extremely excited. How can we make Dave Mustaine come to my office? Help me out. Also, one million. Let's go to one million. Swedish pop star Sara Larsson criticized for wearing dress containing piece of bursum artwork. If you don't know who Sara Larsson is, she's a fairly well-known musician or singer, singress, singress uh, from Sweden. And complete honest opinion, I like Sara Larsson. She's amazing. She's also pretty hot. Anyways, at one cold day in Sweden in January, uh, she showed up at the Petri Guld Award, which is a Swedish uh, radio award, uh, wearing uh, a, a, a gown or something that featured the Bursum Philosophum album uh, with pieces of t-shirts from Cannibal Corpse and Behemoth on it. Can we watch closer? That's close. Okay, so it says Cannibal Corpse here, uh, Behemoth there, or is that Behemoth right there? And there's there a small piece of Bursum right there. And, uh, yeah, people got mad, just as people do. <laughs> Sarah Larsson claimed she didn't know her dress included material associated with the notorious Norwegian blackmail musician and right-wing extremist. Oopsie, had no idea, just thought my clothes looked cool. <laughs> I think people would probably be more mad about, you know, pop stars trying to be cool and hip by using death metal artists' artwork and shit like that. I remember when, uh, was it the Kardashians that were wearing, you know, Slayer stuff and that pissed Gary Holt off and he made like Kill the Kardashian merch and all that. Celebrities, like pop celebrities or celebrities for the sake of being celebrities, wear stuff like this. It's just a little cringe. But they're just trying to be cool, man. You know what? They can wear whatever the f*** they want in my opinion. Who the f*** cares, really? <laughs> Speaking about people getting mad, Dino Casares has been preparing new Fear Factor singer for internet trolls coming after him. Okay, I had a lot of preparations with him because he's gonna have to be able to not only fill some big shoes, which he can vocal-wise, but he's never been inside in that arena where you're gonna have the media, you're gonna have the internet trolls coming after you. So that's one of the main things I'm getting him prepared for because some people just can't handle that emotionally. I don't think anybody needs to worry. The vocalist I got is amazing. He's younger, he's in his mid 30s. He's at his vocal peak, I think. He's there and ready to go. We're not making an announcement yet, but people will hear about it soon. Hello. You know, I'm a little bit curious. Who is this guy? Ha, interesting. All right, the last piece of news is that Sebastian Bach, who look alike, gets hit in head by falling laptop in Falling in Reverse new music video. What? 
At the 208 mark, where Sebastian Bach looked like gets hit in the head by a falling laptop, an apparent nod to the recent wars of words between falling reverse frontman Roddy Radke and the former Skid Row singer. So, uh, going back to last year's news, where uh, you know uh, falling in reverse had to cancel a gig because they, their laptops were stolen, and that started a whole controversy uh, about uh, you know using the use of backing tracks and bullshit. It, it's a terrible discussion that I, I've already covered that a lot. However, I love me some drama. So let's check it out. This is the new Falling in Reverse video. Okay, that's Sebastian Bach. <laughs> Dead news. Who's up there? You won't escape that way. Adventures with Ola. Mm, good coffee. Vänta. Det var det här din kaffekopp. Oh, I almost took a sip of coffee from the wrong coffee cup. This, this is my coffee cup right here. So as you might know, we always try to strive to become better here at Ola England Enterprises uh, with uh, new settings and uh, new things uh, for video making, I guess. Oh, hello, Joel. Oh, hey. Hey, okay, Joel was in here already. No, but we did this. It's a, it's a green screen. Let me shut the door. Look at that. So something I did back in the, in my apartment uh, that some of you guys might remember this, but I had a wall that was completely green screened and I did a lot of videos with, uh, with a green screen. Even though it takes a lot of work, like in post to fix, you know, backgrounds and shit. Uh, I kind of miss that a little bit because, you know, you can basically make your own setting. So we made this right here. We still need to put one more coat on the floor, but the full wall is green. Here we can see Joel. Let's do a couple of different settings here. I am in the ocean now, yeah. I'm out uh, driving in my car. Motherfucking Just, Just do it! it. Obviously, uh, the, the idea is for us to have a setting where we can take more pictures of guitars too and put cool backgrounds onto it. Very exciting and obviously we have, you know, this setting over there, but we're also going to do something on this part of the wall as well. So we have a couple of different settings and uh, Joel is planning this. What, what, what's your plan in regards to this wall? Oh, that's a secret. Oh shit, shit, okay. Alright, so that was Adventure with Bull. Oh. All right, question of the day, the segment where my beautiful members ask me questions. Today's question is from Howie. Hey Ola, Howie here, straight out of the shower. I love the band Bolt Thrower and I know you like them too. So my question is, did you ever see them live or what was your first experience with the band? Okay, see you. Bye bye. Howie straight out of the shower. What a sexy beast, man, he is. In regards to Bolt Fur, believe it or not, Bolt Fur was one of the first metal bands I started listening to. Back in the day when I was maybe 13 years old, uh, I listened a lot to grunge, you know, like Nirvana, Mudhoney, Tad, Melvins, uh, stuff like that, like real, real grunge, okay? But then I started playing Warhammer with a friend of mine, and he was listening to Bolt Thrower. You know, Bolt Thrower is obviously a jab at, you know, the Warhammer universe with the Bolt Throwers and all that. And when I went to the record stores, I saw that the Bolt Thrower albums had like sick artworks on them. Bolt Thrower related, uh, no, Warhammer related artwork on them. And I thought like, hey man, that's so cool. You know, they had their album Warmaster, but I bought the album for Victory, which doesn't have a Warhammer related cover, but it was one of, uh, of their albums. It was in 1994, it was released, I think. I bought it, went home, and you know, going from punk and grunge straight into death metal and bolt thrower, you know, you wouldn't think that I would like it, but I instantly loved it. Just that intro on that album, War, 
Oh my god, man, those harmonies. Can we listen? I, I hope we can listen to this without uh, demonetizing my video, but it's worth it, man. It's worth it. And then just heading straight into Remembrance. I mean, in the metal world, there's a very often that you start an album with an instrumental intro and then you just go full on in the set. It's very common in metal albums that you start with an instrumental intro that's sort of short, that heads into a blasting fucking thrash song or a death metal song uh, as the second song. This was the first time. I experienced that, you know, going from the song War into Remembrance. <sighs> oh my god. Like, just listening to that, that brings me back, man. We played these songs with my band. We did covers in my cover band when I was like 15, 16 years old. It throws me back. I just love Bolt Thrower. However, I never saw him live. It's one of my biggest regrets in life. I haven't seen Bolt Thrower live. Thank you so much, Howie, for that question. All right, Swedish bunch of word of the day. The, people love it, man. I don't understand, but people love Swedish words for some reason. Swedish word of the day today is a bunch of word. It's an expression, and it goes like att skita i det blå skåpet which translate to take a dump in the blue locker. <laughs> Translated, it doesn't make too much sense. Why would someone take a shit in a blue locker? It basically means that you made a fool out of yourself or that you went too far. And you know what? There's a bunch of really good expressions like this for upcoming Swedish Word of the Day. So I'm extremely excited about this. You know, I felt that we would run out on Swedish words that are funny. But now, since I'm going to cover expressions, it's never going to end, man. Skita i det blå skåpet. To poo, to take a dump shit in the blue locker. Let's go. All right, a little extra adventures with Ola. It's Friday the 3rd of February and it's launch day for Solar Guitars European Master Series. I think it's 2 p.m. in the afternoon and we're about to just send everything off, like all the press releases I'm gonna do, release all the videos and, you know, upload all the social medias. And we've all worked really, really hard for the European Master Series. And uh, it's just like, I, I'm just so excited that it's finally gonna happen, you know? And here's Pix, just as excited. Hey, Pordy, Hey, Pordy. So it's just me, Pix, and Louise at the office now. And uh, I'm basically just waiting for the moment to push the button, you know? This whole week has been an absolute chaos. I mean, Louise has been taking pictures and uh i've been doing videos and now uh, everyone's been involved look at that luis looks tired even but it's also friday you know it's been a long week i'm just really excited that we're finally gonna release this thing it's an amazing project that i think uh it's gonna elevate a lot with solo guitars uh just broadening the horizons with this every time we launch something new obviously we're all very very nervous about uh, the response from the audience from you guys uh, just like with, you know, the latest was the Chug Pell probably. And, uh, you know, for us, the Chug Pell was an incredible success and, you know, right on the money. And, uh, you know, we're very confident in this release, but at the same time, you know, obviously we're very nervous too. So it's going to be real interesting seeing the reaction now when I set everything loose. I mean, what will people think, man? We're releasing really expensive guitars in, you know, a recession basically does that make any sense no not at all <laughs> what are people gonna say we'll see
All right, so the time has come. It's 3.30 p.m. <laughs> so it took a little longer. So I'm gonna start by sending out the... Uh, I hear that people are pinging me already. The, the project is live. Okay, so I'm gonna make my video public and then we'll just see how it goes. Boom. Video is live. Uh, shit. I just made the solar guitars video public. Let's uh, see what people think. Ola, that Solar X is one of the most beautiful guitars in the world. Can't wait to get my hands on one. You're an inspiration for so many people. Keep up the great work, man. Holy shit. Great ambition and looking forward to your next steps. My God, these finishes are unreal. So I guess I'm gonna sit and read uh, the comments and the reaction, see the reaction from people. And uh, I'll do that for another couple hours. And then I promise I'll take a Friday, go home and have a little fredagsmys with the rest of the family. So yeah, I thought it might be interesting for you guys to just see how a, a release happens. It's just basically a lot of prepping, a lot of prep work. And uh, then it's just basically the push of a button and uh, hope for the best, basically. <laughs> so there you go. A, a short little adventure with Ola for you right there. And that, my friends, was it for Sunday with Ola 122. Tomorrow I'm doing the live stream of the Swola Contenders on my second channel. We'll check out a bunch of submissions of uh, Sunday with Ola 121 submissions tomorrow and these are really cool live streams by the way there's usually about a hundred or more uh, contributions every week and we watch how many how like 35 or 40 of them and it's a good time man there's so much talent out there and i'm just you know makes me really excited and it really inspires me to see you guys taking on the Rift Challenge every week. And if you want to be a part of the Rift Challenge, you can go download the drums from Swola122, this Swola, and make your riffs to those drums, upload yourself playing that to YouTube and tag it with hashtag Swola122 and then we might watch you in the upcoming Sunday with all the live stream. That's in one week, okay? Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to support what we're doing, you can get a Miami Chug Life cup or a t-shirt. And also a huge thank you to all of my beautiful YouTube members, all my amazing friends on Discord. Thank you so much for making my life a little bit easier. It, it really means a lot. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great Sunday, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye.